We saw a temporary surge in media reports around the fifth anniversary of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear accident, but today it is less uppermost in people's minds. As time passes, the actual situation for Fukushima residents has become less of a national issue and more of a local one. Individuals may have strong memories and reflect deeply on the accident. And whether it is in developing and implementing measures for midterm risk reduction or drawing up risk maps, our system and organizations must also always remember and preserve the experience and lessons learned from the accident. The Great East Japan earthquake struck at 2.46 p.m. on March 11, 2011. The earthquake, the subsequent tsunami, and leakage of radioactive materials from Fukushima Daiichi caused catastrophic damage. The accident led directly to the establishment of the Nuclear Regulation Authority in September 2012. The new body immediately undertook an extensive revision of nuclear safety regulations, taking into particular account the lessons from the accident. More than one year after the accident, and immediately after the NRA was established, the situation remained critical. The presence of large volumes of radioactive material made salvage operations extremely hazardous and difficult. Authorities faced a mountain of problems, from clearing rubble to improving extremely harsh working environments. The Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station was designated as a specified nuclear facility. Under the direction of the NRA, TEPCO, the plant's owner, drew up and submitted an implementation plan to tackle the myriad of problems caused by the accident. The NRA also made recommendations to improve health controls for local residents. As recovery efforts at Fukushima continued step by step, another accident occurred at the Fukushima's control board when the body of a dead rat short-circuited the electricity supply simultaneously across nine facilities within the plant, including the spent fuel pool in Unit 4. The overall situation remained volatile, and multiple problems emerged, including leakage of contaminated water from underground reservoirs and tanks. In October 2013, the NRA ordered TEPCO to address problems with its on-site management capability and make swift improvements. The removal of spent fuel assemblies from Unit 4 started soon after. A big issue at the time, this was completed successfully in December 2014. Once those fuel assemblies were removed, the situation changed dramatically. In February 2015, the NRA announced its measures for midterm risk reduction at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station. The NRA risk map uses risk predictions to help direct clear strategic decommissioning of Fukushima Daiichi. The risk map looks specifically at how to treat high radioactive contaminated water, an issue that had already consumed much time and effort because the total amount of contaminated water in tanks had been steadily increasing as groundwater flowed into the reactor buildings. More tanks would then be required to contain the contaminated water. On occasion, contaminated water leaked from bolted joint tanks. These tanks are now being replaced with welded tanks. While the water can no longer escape, it does emit radiation and continues to impact the environment. The multi-nuclide removal system, ELPS, plays a central role in water treatment. As ELPS becomes fully operational, the treatment of high radioactive contaminated water was mostly complete by May 2015. The underground tunnels housing pipes and cables on the seaside of turbine buildings are called seaside pipe trenches. 
High radioactive contaminated water began building up in the trenches from units 2 to 4 immediately after the initial accident. Here, we removed contaminated water by filling the trench shafts with highly liquid mortar. The removal of stagnant water in units 2, 3 and 4 is now complete. The successful management of 10,000 tons of high radioactive contaminated water in seaside trenches marks a major achievement in dealing with the huge contaminated water issue. Various methods have been used to reduce new inflows of groundwater and control the volume of contaminated water. Subdrain control systems are used to pump comparatively clean groundwater from wells surrounding the reactor buildings, which is then treated using specialized equipment and discharged into the sea. I am standing on a seawall in the harbor. You can see the seaside impermeable wall running along the seawall for units 1 through 4, this has really helped to reduce radiation levels in the port seawater. Treating contaminated water in tanks. Reducing groundwater inflow into plant buildings. Removing high radioactive contaminated water from seaside pipe trenches. Blocking the flow of radioactive materials into the sea. These four activities continue to help contain contaminated water in Fukushima Daiichi. However, to continue decommissioning, the water in the tanks must be discharged into the sea in a way that satisfies regulatory requirements. A clear plan needs to be put into place before the facilities and space for storing contaminated water are exhausted. The issue becomes much more difficult if you consider how the tanks themselves might have to be monitored and stored going forward. Already, large volumes of rubble are being stored within the Fukushima Daiichi site, both from the original accident and from the decommissioning process. A clear system is required to strategically manage radioactive waste that will undoubtedly increase as the decommissioning process continues. The organizations involved need to think carefully about how they are going to handle, classify and safely store radioactive waste. A new facility that could help reduce the amount of radioactive waste is currently in the operational testing phase. This is an incineration plant for miscellaneous radioactive waste. It is extremely important to reduce the amount of waste by burning combustible items, such as Tyvek suits. Strategically managing radioactive materials will help reduce the impact of radiation. It will also reduce the exposure risk for those working in Fukushima Daiichi. Up until now, people working in Fukushima Daiichi have had to wear Tyvek suits and full face masks. Wearing a full face mask makes it hard to do an efficient job, and it could potentially adversely affect workers' health. The NRA is pressing TEPCO to expand the number of areas where workers don't need to wear the full face masks. Systems are being put in place to reduce radiation doses within the facility. The ground surface is also being sprayed with mortar to prevent the absorption of rainwater. Within the facility, there are a growing number of areas where workers are not required to wear full protective gear. In an attempt to keep workers informed, over 80 mobile radiation monitoring systems monitor radiation levels and display them on large screens. 
In addition to improving the working environment on the site, some significant new facilities have also been built. There is now a new large rest house for the 7,000 people working daily on Fukushima's decommissioning project. In addition to the rest house, there is a meal service center and convenience store. Shower rooms will be added soon. The working environment is definitely improving, but it is important to consistently review what is required to make working conditions on the site as easy as possible. These efforts do help improve conditions and reduce risks at Fukushima Daiichi. But risks clearly remain. From a risk perspective, I would like to see the fuel assemblies in the spent fuel pools removed. Removing the fuel from the spent fuel pool in Unit 3 in particular will represent a clear step forward in the whole process. Many stages remain before Fukushima Daiichi can be fully decommissioned. Five years on, the most important thing is that we will not forget the lessons learned from the accident. I want us to progress swiftly with the decommissioning at Fukushima Daiichi without endangering people or the environment. I was involved with nuclear power long before the accident, and so, as a member of the nuclear power industry, I feel a large responsibility for the accident. Whether it be the decommissioning of the plant or the off-site decontamination, there are still many large issues to overcome and we need firm and clear responses. Coming to the Okamamachi off-site center, I really felt that time has stood still. It appears frozen in exactly the same state as it was a couple of days after the earthquake. This visit really helped me understand the condition of Fukushima Daiichi and surrounding areas. I work in the field of geology and seismology, and this place epitomizes the sheer damage that such an event can cause. With what happened here in mind, I'm even more determined to forge ahead with what we have to do. I got to walk in Tomioka Machi, an area designated as a difficult to return zone. I took a radiation meter with me. The radiation dose was lower than I expected. It's nowhere near as low as before the accident. But as members of the NRA, the least we can do is closely monitor and disclose radiation levels here. We haven't dealt much with these difficult to return zones so far, but we need to monitor them more closely from now on. Ultimately, safety and security is what protects people. From that perspective, I am committed to doing everything that I can. Compared to the extremely tense situation in the immediate aftermath of the accident, there are far fewer risks that require an immediate emergency response. We have now reached the stage where we can proceed strategically with decommissioning. That will affect when local residents will be able to move home. We need to create the right conditions so that people who want to can come back as soon as possible. How can we ensure those conditions are met? How can we keep the process at the forefront of people's minds? I intend to think about these things every day. Five years have passed since the accident at Fukushima Daiichi. Today, the situation has shifted from one of emergency response to one of strategic and systematic planning for future decommissioning. It'll take many years to resolve all of the problems. The Nuclear Regulation Authority's mission has been and always will be to prioritize safety. We'll continue to monitor decommissioning and decontamination activities at Fukushima Daiichi to ensure they progress surely, steadily, and safely.